Today's ICTs in education are not mere photo opportunities, but are successful strategic choices for development. I am Hamza from Pakistan and I'm a youth activist for technology and education with several organizations working to get smart at appropriate, relevant, effective, and just as importantly, the inappropriate, the irrelevant, and the ineffective uses of technology to achieve developmental role models for global solutions in order to make reality the complete ICTization of today's education. Driving what I like to call an education 3.0 revolution. We have dictated education of society 1.0 and 2.0 education systems are upgraded with applied knowledge based on relationships where everything is open. This is a vision of a future whereby schools replace older learning methods with the taboo and forbidden softwares like Skype and Wikipedia within class to initiate real learning. A discussion so important that it's not about why should, but why must we invest in ICTs. But how do we know ICTs in education to be successful? Frankly, we don't, because we've never tried them out in education. As the dark, but extremely thought-provoking humor about Einstein awakening in the 21st century and being awestruck by the changes he sees in everything except one, a classroom. Everything has evolved so much in much lesser time that one wonders why even an entire century has not changed our classrooms. With this question in mind, we are going to be discussing today how ICTs, enhanced access, education, and ensured success are able to fit in a single, complete sentence as highlighted in red. But why only today? Because today the systems have evolved. What used to be bedrooms have become greater sources of learning than classrooms ever could. Because today the internet has given a platform for unparalleled creativity, where we can design the future and become the change we wish to see in the world. We now move on to discovering the aim or direction for this paper, which is also the second section of this presentation. More specifically, the aim of this paper is to find out what we know and don't know about using technology in education effectively. Because today, the ICTs are destined to revolutionize our educational system like motion picture did in the 19th century for Thomas Edison. We now move on to section three of the presentation, where the reality that the world is crippled by the em education emergency that threatens tens of millions of children will be supported by the key findings of this paper. UDHR dictates that ICTs and education be equally accessible to all, but based on literature and interviews during this paper writing process, found this to be far from reality. Presented next, are the key findings of this paper, followed by the seven core issues found behind these challenges. The pictures preceding each challenge highlights the Pakistani public school challenges and are shown to give an idea of what the project associated with this paper targets and works with. Moving on to the key facts, the paper finds that up to 30% of the citizens are living in extreme educational poverty. 58 countries were found to be nowhere even close to initiating the achievement of the universal primary education, whereas 2041 was the earliest when a province in Pakistan will be able to provide every child their constitutional right to education. It was found that out of the 72 million children out of school, 41 million are girls. Public expenditure on schools was found to be only 1.5% of the gross domestic product or GDP, causing more than half urban children to prefer private schools the paper found that almost two in three rural school children cannot even read a story. Whilst two years of dedicated reforms are needed for improvements, next will be discussed the seven issues which are the initiators behind these challenges we face, along with several misconceptions, clarified myths busted by the paper. The first idea or the first issue was that of inadequate educational tools where students can be found leaving schools at an early age, unskilled and untrained in many disciplines. Whereas the second issue is about the lack of creativity in communities when attempting to make education more fun and engaging for the students. 
The third issue deals with lack of equality within present educational system and is linked with the fourth issue of unqualified teacher. The next issues are about inequalities in access to technology tools and the subsequent minority culture that it promotes. The final issue discussed is about outdated technologies or the public versus private school paradigm. It is most disturbing that nothing is being done about uh, to bring a change in within our education system. Analyzing these issues and key challenges, the paper finds that education is the most critical emergency today and provides several solutions that ask for increased ICT use to extend the reach of educational opportunity by applying them to maximize opportunity for continuous learning within an education ICTization revolution through collaborative logic reasoning and creative expression. The paper further finds of vital importance the building on the current exp experiences of existing and successful ICT programmers to ensure that available money is wisely spent since this is the first priority of finding solutions that can conform to the criteria set for a technology-driven education revolution that prepares the workforce for the future careers which don't at all sound, feel, or look like anything of today. The next section of this presentation presents the project associated with this paper. We will start this section with a short video introducing the idea and how it's changing lives in Pakistan. And One laptop per child is the vision that provides the world's poorest children with low-cost connected laptop for a brighter future. It's a non-profit laptop with five core principles. First, kids get to keep them. Second, the focus is early education. Third, whole schools get them so no one gets left out. Fourth, kids must have internet. And fifth, use a software that adapts. But why give a laptop to a child who may have no future? Because education is the foundation. That's why the laptop is rugged low cost, low powered, and connected with a screen that can be read in direct sunlight, along with a built-in webcam for pictures and video clips that add up to one incredible result. When the EXO laptop comes to a classroom or village, kids get engaged or inspired. They learn to solve their own challenges and when they might even help us solve ours. The big picture is to transform children into lifelong learners that are the problem solvers and leaders of tomorrow's digital and connected world, where we are moving from fixed content to seamless content, which is child-friendly, education-friendly, and can reach out especially to lowest strata of society. The OLPC program is about taking the education to the students, where one laptop provides all the teaching platforms at a really low price of only $100, making the laptop instrumental today to the change we wish to see around the world. Be it Nepal, Solomon Islands, Iraq, Haiti, Rwanda, Mongolia, India, Colombia, Thailand, Ghana, Pakistan, Peru, Cameroon, Ethiopia, Nigeria, or the other of 1.2 million deployments worldwide. Having discussed education emergency, we will now in section 5 of the presentation look at how ICTs can be integrated within our societies to transform them into the technological-based educational systems using two extremely popular sub-branches of Web 2.0 namely wikis and blogs, which use Web 2.0 to ensure that technology and learning is centered around interests of the learners. But what is Web 2.0? Web 2.0 represents all web applications where the learning is immersive, where content creation and posting takes place, such as social networking sites like Facebook, wikis like media, and tons of other online applications like Joomla, Grayfix, Furl, Google Docs, or uh, tons of others. Web 2.0 fits in a technology 3.0 education revolution by providing innovative ideas like class information wikis. Blogs, which can be made for free on one of these sites, are yet another great example of how Web 2.0 can be used within classes, as they provide a space for sharing opinions and learning knowledge while giving students a totally new perspective on the meaning of voice. The Web 2.0 ensures that at every, stop, every step it fosters ownership and choice, which makes students feel more compelled to write when and what they believe, bringing about a learning transformation, whereby like water it flows freely and can be tapped into whenever we want it and as we want it. Having discussed the integration of existing technologies, section six moves the discussion forward by focusing on how new ICT innovations like MOVES or GBLs are taking this education revolution forward. MOVES are called simply as virtual worlds, are basically extensions of our real world that exist only online, allowing learning through inhibition and interaction. Where GBLs or game-based lear game learning theory 
are serious games that use simulations and moves to engage students through a storyline, which motivates them to learn from their mistakes. Three projects leading by examples are the Harvard's River City project, which allows learners to bring their 21st century skills and technology to address 19th century problems, and the IBM's virtual model of the Forbidden City. Another hugely tremendous project is the Teen Second Life project, which is a 3D virtual world where users can socialize, connect, and create using voice and text chat. But moves and GBLs are not the only innovations. An eye catcher is found in the iSchool or the iPod based learning. I introduce you to Future of Education, the iSchool. Imagine a schoolroom with no books, paper, or number two pencils. Impossible, you say? What we see next are apps already on iPhone. For example, Starwalk provides virtual tour of universe, whereas Classics allows book reading while saving resources. The iSchool transforms education. With the end of the high school class, we also reach the conclusion part of today's presentation, with, where this paper finds that in the context of the ICT revolution and growth in the volume of knowledge, our society is now faced with an urgent need for radical changes, with innovation needed by both the developing and the developed countries to enhance access of ICTs in education to ensure success in eradicating educational deficiencies at the global level. In short, it means that the technology-based education revolution leaves no room for statements like I just don't know enough about technology as we all are responsible for becoming the change we wish to see in the world. We now move on to the eighth and final section of this presentation which is a thought provoker. It was during a teachers conference that the idea of using slates was looked down upon in 1703 but thankfully the world went on with the revolution and it introduced slates. We were challenged again and again starting from depending too much on paper in 1815 on ink, 1907, a store-bought ink, 1928, too much on fountain pens, 1941, ballpoints, 1950, calculator for tables and interpolation, 1980, using calculator instead of performing long divisions by hand, 1989, allowing students to use internet instead of libraries, 1995, and just a short while back for replacing overhead projectors with LCD ones that we are seeing today in 1999 for allowing students to use laptops at the millennium. But thankfully all this time the world went on and on, unscattered, unmoved, unobliging to ever give in. But we just didn't learn from experience, did we? Because even today, in the 2011, we still look down upon the current innovation that aids learning much more than schools and paper bounds could. So it's about time we ask ourselves this, what if we listened? Thank you for your attention and for being a part of this discussion today. This presentation and the paper can be found on SlideShare, and please remember that I am just a click away, so feel free to contact me for a discussion any day. Thank you. Great. Yeah, thank you for the presentation. Uh, uh, you, you talked, the project you are talking about, I feel that it's more linked, linked towards the developed country, because it's a country like you are talking about Pakistan, the place where there are no teachers, there are, the children don't even have the book. So how can they move towards that laptop? type of place. They don't have the money to buy a book and how can we manage the cost? Even the government can't afford this, even the, the NGO can't afford this. Well, uh, two years back we were, uh, I went to a conference in Switzerland. It was named by ITU. Uh, I work for it now as a youth activist. And what it does is that developed countries are playing their role by buying these laptops for these kids. So they bought about 100,000 deployments in Pakistan. and. Uh, the basic rule that you know, when they go to a school or an area, every child must get a laptop. So that ensures that uh, the issue basically today is that you know, we need to make sure that these kids get technology because that's a thinking. You know, people think that you know, we need books first. But what we are saying is that we need technology because technology today is providing all the other books, as I showed in the IE school as well. You, know, you can just replace technology with books and you can save a lot of money. Well, I think that this was a great presentation, although it was very swift. We didn't have much time to read what you had on the screen. But I know that this program is being implemented in Ghana, where I am coming from. But my question is this. Who is creating content for this ICT-based education program? How is it controlled? Who and who is involved? Well, uh, there are several organizations involved. Uh, it was started by someone else, and I, I don't recall the name right now. But ITU, what ITU is doing is that uh, it's uh, hiring software engineers to make uh, open content on this uh, platform. So what we do is that uh, the platform, for example, if it has a word processor which is as good as a Microsoft Word. So it's being done so that uh, the kids can just get the software and they get it for free. And ITU is being the one that's controlling it. And it, it has like a 128 member country ownership. 
So it's the 128 countries that get to have a say in it, and then it holds youth forums to develop the future leaders. All right, thank you, everybody. That was our free presentation.